It's been a while since we've uh, done a video here. Kind of liking the wide angle for this. Let's see. Honestly, this chair doesn't get quite low enough. Got to pan up some. But anyways, there we go. So, all right. Well, welcome, welcome back, guys. Um, I know it's been a while since I've made a video here. If you didn't know, I partnered with Kazi and we've been making a ton of great tutorials on his channel, uh, which has meant that I've kind of neglected this space, which I do hate. Uh, and especially since every time I check in, there's more and more of you here, I'm probably hoping for more and more content. So now that things are settling down just a little bit for me, um, we're back in the studio. We're back on my channel, I'm back to creating some content. And so I'm not gonna waste too much time explaining things. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into what today's video is about. And if you click the title, you probably know what that is. Today, we're starting somewhat of a new series that I don't have a great name for yet. I'm just gonna call it Quick Tips for Today. And basically the point is, I'm gonna be sharing three quick tips in each of these videos of this series. And they're gonna be just small things that I've learned along the way, uh, just through my colorist career, and hopefully revealing some things that maybe you didn't know about, or maybe some that you did, and you just haven't been utilizing them as much as you could. But either way, they're just tips that have helped me uh, expedite my grading process, get better looks, and in the end, just leads to happy clients and good work overall. And really, I think that's the secret. Um, the secret to becoming a good colorist, or good anything, is just time and patience and repetition doing it over and over again you do pick up on all these things and there's no real shortcut around it besides this video series um, but you'll also pick up on your own things that you learn over time and I've kind of said it in a couple different ways but to kind of sum it all up it's never just one thing or one tip you learn that's gonna you put you way ahead of the curve you're building a house and every little nugget of information you learn is one more brick and to build that house each brick matters each brick has to be laid in order for that house to stand so that's what this video series is dedicated to all the bricks that I've used to build my house over the past several years so hopefully you like this video and you learned something if you do please be sure to like this video be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and of course share it with somebody who you think could benefit from it as well now before we get started I want to give a huge thanks to today's video sponsor and that is motion array if you haven't heard of them definitely check them out I'll leave a link down in the description and we'll hear more about them in just a moment but let's go ahead and dive into resolve and check out the three tips I've got for you today All right, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, so here we are in Resolve. We're gonna go ahead and jump right into tip number one. And tip number one, again, this is not a major you know, life hack, but it is something that I think will help you speed up your process uh, and something that actually probably took me a little bit too long to learn. So I wanna be sure you guys have access to this knowledge a little bit earlier, hopefully, than I did in my career. So we've all heard of shared nodes and I really think they're one of the most underutilized tools in Resolve. There's tons of different ways to use shared nodes, um, but in this case specifically, I'm gonna be talking about using them as noise reduction. And the main reason you might wanna use noise reduction in a shared node is because if you know you're gonna have you know, certain types of noise reduction needed for a number of different clips, and you need to be turning it off and on at different times, so maybe you can actually get that full speed playback because you can playback full speed you know, without noise reduction, but then whenever noise reduction is turned on, maybe it bogs your machine down a little bit. This is a quick and easy way to, in one click enable that noise reduction node but it's going to actually turn it on in every clip that node is placed so let's go ahead and build that shared node we're going to do that in the beginning here so we're going to go shift s to place a node prior and we're just going to name this one actually we're not going to label it here's why if you create a node you label it and then you convert it to a shared node you have to rename it anyways so we're just going to leave it unlabeled for now and we're going to go ahead and build that noise reduction so let's set it to two frames for no reason in particular and then luma we're just going to bring this up to around six or seven and then spatial threshold we're going to delink these and take our chroma slider to around 6.9 and so now we've just done a little bit of noise reduction there, a little bit of smoothing as well. Uh, and this was shot on red, so it's gonna have a little bit of that noise there as it usually does. And so now we have our noise reduction node. So now we're gonna go ahead and make this a shared node just by right clicking on the node itself. And then in that contextual menu, we're gonna hit save as shared node. And now we can rename it as usual and we'll just type in NR. So these two little arrows right here, that's what indicates that it's a shared node. And so Resolve actually does something pretty smart here. Whenever we have a shared node that's created, uh, they automatically lock that node so that you don't accidentally make changes to it without knowing that you're actually on the shared node thinking it's a clip specific node. So if we were trying to balance this clip and we wanted to add a little bit of you know, coolness to the shadows, and we accidentally did that in the noise reduction node here, that could definitely lead to a lot of other problems if that node's being placed in tons of other clips. So the way to actually make changes here is just right click it and then deselect locked node. And you can lock any node, but the shared nodes are locked by default. So you have to unlock them to make any more changes. So if this was locked and we were to take our offset, 
you'll see it just keeps resetting itself and nothing's actually happening here. And that's for the most part what we want to happen. So just keep in mind, you will have to unlock it in order to make changes to that shared node. So now let's go ahead and get into how to actually use this functionally. Say we need to introduce our noise reduction node here as well. Here's what we're gonna have to do. We'll move this node over and then right click it. And then in add node, we're gonna have all of our normal options for the new serial, parallel, layer, outside node. But then at the bottom, there's our shared nodes. And this one's our noise reduction one. So we're gonna hit noise reduction. And then just like that, it adds our noise reduction node. Now, the only way to add the shared node is to have it add after the node that you selected. But one quick little way around that is move this one back where we wanted it. And if we wanted the shared noise reduction node to come first, we can just have it selected and then press E on our keyboard. That's gonna extract it from our node tree. And then we can just drag it over right here and it's gonna reinsert it prior to our contrast node. And so we can do that same process right here, add node, noise reduction, and then press E and then drag it right here. And you really just have to like drag it on that line and you'll have a little plus come up whenever it's actually trying to place it there right there. And so then you can just let go and it's gonna go ahead and place that node uh, wherever you've inserted it, anywhere on the node tree. So one of the main ways I use this feature is if I'm trying to grade the project, I'm gonna go ahead and disable that noise reduction node just so I can get better performance. When I hit spacebar, it's gonna start playing full speed. But then when it comes time to render, instead of having to go through and re-enable the noise reduction node on every single clip, I can just click it one time and it's gonna enable it right there. And of course it's gonna do that in every clip that node is placed. Now, before we get to tip number two, I wanna take a second to tell you guys about Motion Array. I started using Motion Motion Array shortly after starting this channel because I wanted to add a little bit more flair to my videos. Even small things like callouts, animations, subscribe buttons, they all help take your content to the next level. And Motion Array has over 80,000 premium quality templates, stock videos, and music files to help make your videos better. And as a paid user, I can tell you the best part about this membership is the unlimited license. You have one license and that covers everything you're ever going to create using their products, whether you're making small YouTube videos for yourself like I'm doing here, or if you're working on a major corporate spot that's going to be aired on TV, that one license covers everything. And if for any reason you ever decide to cancel your membership, any projects you finish with an active license will be covered forever and ever. From video templates to stock footage, music, sound effects, motion graphics, and more, Motion Ray literally has it all. Downloading is super easy and they even have direct plugins and extensions for Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Photoshop. Best of all, you can try it out for free. You won't have access to everything in their library, but you will have hundreds of awesome free assets. And then now for tip number two, we're actually gonna be using a clip I got from Motion Array. Uh, their stock footage library is excellent. So let's go ahead and jump back into Resolve and check it out. All right, so on to tip number two in this clip, as I mentioned, this is from Motion Array. It's a very cool clip here. And of course, here's the original. This is just a pretty basic log image. And here's the graded image. Uh, not a lot going on, just a little bit of contrast. And then using our Look Designer plugin, uh, just using a few different film prints and uh, some printer lights uh, and our Lift, Gamma, and Gain as well. So diving into our second tip here, like I mentioned, this clip is from Motion Array. And here's the clip before I actually graded it. And it's a pretty cool looking eerie shot. Uh, and then I made it even darker just by adding this vignette over here on the outsides uh, just to make sure that we felt really isolated uh, with that character there that there's really nothing around her so that's one vignette that I've added then I got a second one here and that leads us into our second tip which is tracking and back before resolve 17 uh, say we came you know halfway into our clip and we wanted to track this mask to follow our subject and we could track it forward and then come all the way back and track it backwards and that was just always a pain having to go back to the first keyframe and then track it in reverse. And so in Resolve 17, they added a forward and reverse tracking button. And I think it's actually one of the most practical features they've added in a long time. So now I can just go ahead in the middle of the clip, we'll go ahead and place our mask where we need it. And then we can just hit this track forward and backward button right here. And it's gonna track it forward and then backward from the point at which the tracking began. So saves us just a little bit of time. And again, it's nothing revolutionary or life-changing. It's just one of those things that's helpful and it's gonna save you time on every single project. So now we're gonna move on to our third clip and our third tip. And the third tip is don't stack problems. Don't try to fix something that's broken by adding more broken to it. We're thinking about subtractive solutions and not additive solutions. And so to demonstrate that, I've got this balancing node here. So what I did was just make a few little changes to balance this image. And you know, we added a little bit more warmth in the upper mids and the highlights and then cooled off the shadows a touch uh, and maybe you know, we go on and then we come back to that shot and we realize later our mid-tones are just a little bit too warm and we need to pull those back well instead of trying to stack that problem and thinking oh i'll just fix it over here and so we try cooling it off and so now we've cooled off our mid-tones in a separate node and we're stacking those two issues on top of each other now 
we have a solution sort of, but that solution just comes from adding two problems together. We're mixing too many changes that aren't gonna be as predictable, and they're also not gonna translate very well to other clips. And the whole goal here is to keep things as simple as possible and build a look that's going to transfer over to as many clips as possible. So rather than try and even fix this in a second clip, let's go ahead and reset this. And if we wanted to cool off our midtones, let's do it in the balancing node where the problem comes from in the first place. So you'll notice in this clip, we're not getting necessarily drastically different results by doing it all in one node versus trying to fix it in a second node. But this problem really shows itself when you have hundreds of shots and you're trying to do a whole lot of shot matching really quickly. And I've had to learn this the hard way. When you try and fix problems by stacking more and more changes, you usually just create more problems for yourself and you're gonna slow yourself down drastically. It's always better to go back and locate where the problem originates from and then make that change to fix the problem there. If you're driving down the road and you notice you're going too fast and your foot's on the gas, you wouldn't wanna just add brake at the same time. The first step would be to let off the gas, creating a subtractive solution, and then applying the brakes. And in the same way here, when we notice that our image is a little bit too warm, we don't wanna just cool it off later. We wanna go back to the problem in the first place, let off the gas, AKA cool our image off here, and then we may find that we don't even need brakes in the first place. Well, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, please be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel because we will be putting out a lot more here. Also, if you have any ideas for naming this series here other than quick tips definitely be sure to leave that in the comments down below thanks so much for tuning in and i hope to see you guys in the next one